Aloha, I'm Lila Berg. Mahalo for tuning in to Island Focus. Every year in October, our country celebrates Free Speech Week because freedom of speech in all of its forms is the foundation of a vibrant democracy. We're recording this program remotely from my home so that you can meet the people who continue to maintain those fundamental rights. Mahalo for joining us on Island Focus. With us today on Island Focus, I have the pleasure of talking with Chad Blair, who is with the Society of Professional Journalists. Mahalo for taking the time to be with us, Chad. Hi, Lila. Thanks for having me here. You know, this is a, a very interesting time for journalists, isn't it? Oh, boy, that's, that's an understatement. Um, you know, so many people in my industry are out of work as so many industries across the nation, particularly because of the COVID situation in the last six months. I'm very fortunate that as an editor with Civil Beat, Honolulu Civil Beat, we're going strong. We've actually seen our numbers go up. People are donating to us. We're a nonprofit and I'm very grateful because I think a lot of people feel locally as well as nationally, internationally, that there's no more urgent time for a, a press, a media asking honest questions, tough questions, trying to get answers to help us go through. So, so thank you. It's, it's, it's a funny time to be alive, but I'm grateful to be employed and hopefully of being service to folks here in Hawaii. Free speech could not be more important to your profession, but also to your relationship with the public. Yeah, so you know, it's interesting that the First Amendment includes several things. Not everybody thinks about it. I'm, I guess you had other speakers talking about it, and I won't dwell on it too much. But in addition to freedom of speech, freedom of religion, freedom of the press, there's also the right to peacefully assemble. And we're seeing that a lot right now. But also that's complicating this situation is, when is your assembly interfering with my own personal rights? And I've been thinking a lot lately about people wearing masks and the mandate from governments that you should do that. That's the best way to ward off uh, the coronavirus. And yet other people saying that somehow striking down on my civil liberties, that you forcing me to wear a mask, giving me a penalty of some sort, a fine if I don't do that, is undemocratic or un-American. And that's one of the things that's really on my mind right now, because starting at 1600 Pennsylvania Avenue, you have a president who just in the last 24 hours, as we record this, said, yeah, masks are important, but they're really not the most important thing. Let's get a vaccine. Conflicting his own director of the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention. And that kind of mixed message is really frustrating. And that's why I think it's so important to have the media trying to get the exact record to rely on what the scientists say and compare that to what others say and try and find out who's right, who's wrong. So that is very much on my mind right now when I think about freedom of the press and the First Amendment. Well, and when we talk also about an individual's right to express their opinion, I know you're talking professionally, um, it gets very complicated. It does. I think if someone wants to get together in a rally and not wear a mask and be closer than six feet, that's their right. They can do that. And in many cases, the police are holding off on doing anything about that. I went to Alamona Beach Park the other day and there was a rally. It was Trump supporters, but it was also people that want businesses to reopen, who feel that it's a tyranny to force them to wear a mask. But I also support their fundamental right to do that. And if they do want to risk getting sick or if they just don't believe that COVID-19 is a serious threat, they have every right to do that. But when you take that belief and you force it on others and say, well, I'm going to go to Longs or I'm going to go to Safeway or Target and I'm not going to wear a mask, that's where your rights are interfering with somebody else's rights. And in this case, possibly life or death situations. And that I can't really understand. Civil liberties are important. But what about decency? Being respectful of another person's space, is it that big of a deal to to wear a mask to go pick up a gallon of milk? And then you can take it off wherever else you go after that. So that's something that um, concerns me a great deal, that somehow your rights are uh, more important than another person's rights. Well, and in, in, in the field of civic education you know, that I participate in, the, the word civility, to be a mm -hmm. civilian, to be a citizen, and to be civil. In Hawaii especially, you know, where, where we really 
we live here because we care about each other and it's it's in our blood. How does that play out with free speech? Well, by the time this airs, it could be that the COVID situation and the, the lockdown and the shutdown and the regulations may have evolved yet again. We'll hope that things are better. But as we speak now, I, I myself am frustrated that I can't go to the beach uh, with a friend or a family member, that I can't go hike in a trail without someone with me, that I can't go to a, a park because that's the current regulation that is on Oahu. We'll see how that lasts. But here I am now in many ways being somewhat sympathetic with that other point of view saying, well, wait a minute. I mean, I, I, I understand. I'll wear my mask and so forth. But even I can't go to the beach with a, a, a friend, with a, a girlfriend, with my mother. That really frustrates me uh, tremendously as well. But you know what? I am following the rules. I am abiding uh, by the laws. And uh, when I see police officers doing their job, I respect that. It's a real balancing act, isn't it, Lila? Really trying to strike something that uh, gives us some sort of sense of e equilibrium. And that seems all out the door right now. The last six months have been just crazy. So in closing, as we wrap up this conversation for today and, and the, the role of free speech in society and from your profession, some parting words of inspiration. Don't give up the fight. Uh, don't give up speaking out, speaking up when you feel that you need to. Despite all our problems in this country, we still have the right to say how we feel. And don't let authoritarian figures try and tell you otherwise. Don't try, don't accept their view that something is fake news when in fact it's produced by serious professionals that are doing a very good job to try and get what's right. And by the way, when we get something wrong, we acknowledge it and we correct it. Uh, stay hopeful. I think uh, transparency, accountability, and, and free speech is really what's going to help get us through, as well, frankly, as good science and people being patient. Well, thank you so much for taking the time to be with us. And uh, if I can punctuate your last comment, also aloha. Ah, that's a <laughs> word that is cannot be understated or overstated. <laughs> Thanks, Lila. <laughs> thank you for being with us, Chad. Sure. Thank you for joining us on Island Focus today and meeting Chad Blair, who is with the Society of Professional Journalists. Mahalo. Mahalo for tuning in to Island Focus and joining me in meeting Janice Jin, who is the news director at KITV4 Island News. Thank you for being with us today, Janice. Thank you. You know, your role as news director, uh, particularly at this time in America's history, is really important um, when we're talking about free speech. Could you share a little bit more about your responsibilities and what does free speech mean to KITV4? Well, I think, first of all, that the media plays a very important role in democracy. So part of that democracy is having this free speech. So our role as a news organization is to make sure that a lot of voices get heard. So what we often talk about in our business is we're the voice of the voiceless. Sometimes people feel that they can't express or they have a position that is not heard loud enough, if you will. Sometimes we get to do those stories and meet those individuals. The freedom of the press is so important. It's like free speech and First Amendment. I am part of Radio Television News Directors Association, which is RTDNA, a national organization that fights for the rights of broadcast journalists. So we're out there on kind of on two ends. One is sort of protecting the voice of the people who need to be heard and also protecting ourselves from the public who doesn't like us. And it doesn't help that we have current national leadership that calls us fake news. We are not fake news. We're telling you what's going on. So I believe so that people, our population, our citizens can make decisions about their lives, who to vote for, what to buy, who they should support. Sometimes it's just, if we do a story about science, it's stuff telling you something you just didn't know. So we have that opportunity to do that. At the same time, we protect ourselves from, if you will, the critics. So we have the critics on the politician side. We have the critics on the public side sometimes. And sometimes we also get into conflict with police. So with the establishment, the news organization, every journalist 
should be working as an independent voice to bring home to the people a view of what's going around them. Because you can't be everywhere, right? I can't be everywhere. We have a team of people who can go out and collect, if you will, images and sound and interviews with people in general. I believe that everybody in this country has a story. Everybody in this country has a voice. We have to find them and give them time to express it. What I recognize is sometimes those voices, not everybody agrees with. So when that happens, um, as a public entity that we are, we get a lot of response, if you will. And it's those people who don't like what we just put on, whether that's the president or the mayor, or you know, could be the school principal, they will call in in a flash, they will write an email and say, take that person off the air. We don't like that interview. And I think in some ways, I appreciate the fact that people are watching. I appreciate the fact that people are understanding they can have a position. But sometimes you're kind of overly critical. And I think that they're not, you know, I want them to be kind of, if you will, more open to understanding the democracy in which we live. It's so important to us that we have a choice and that we're that voice. What would you suggest in terms of allaying the fears when people get upset? You know, with you, because they get upset probably with their neighbor as well. Yeah, I, I don't know that I have a personal position that I could advise other than to say that I hope is that people, um, people understand that the divergent of voices makes all of our voices actually better. Mm-hmm. And that opinions, I learned from you, if you and I don't agree, I learned from you, why don't you agree? And it might cause me to think, Maybe I shouldn't think that way anymore. So that's the that's the value of getting that information out that people can judge. It is the same thing that we're talking about. Presidential debates are coming. I think a lot of people are really looking forward to it. They want to hear what's being said so they can make a decision. So I think that if we listen to each other, we learn to listen in this breath of freedom of speech and First Amendment rights. If we listen to each other, we become a better knowledgeable society. And First Amendment rights apply to everybody. Yes. You know, I think one of the things that we um, perhaps can help the audience understand is when we have a visceral reaction or a, an emotional reaction, maybe just to take a deep breath and to <laughs> listen a little more clearly because everybody has a right to the freedom yes. of what they think. That's what this is about, right? It makes us better. It just makes us better. These freedoms that we have makes our society, makes our individuals a better person, a better country, I hope. Well, thank you so much for the work that you do at KITV for, um, as well as in your professional organization, and for sharing your personal thoughts with us today. Thank you. Thank you. Mahalo. Thank you for joining me today on Island Focus and meeting Janice Jin, who is the news director at KITV4 Island News. Aloha. Today on Island Focus, you will enjoy meeting Sandy Ma, who is the Executive Director for Common Cause. Thank you for being with us, Sandy. Thank you, Lila, for having Common Cause on your show today. Please explain to us uh, what Common Cause's mission is, vision, and how does free speech play into everything you do? Well, Common Cause is a nonpartisan, nonprofit organization, and we want to make sure that we preserve and uphold the American values of democracy. We want to make sure that people can advocate at the legislature, before their county councils, people can advocate and talk with their elected officials and make sure that their positions are heard on par with big money donors, with lobbyists. So we want to make sure that people can actually engage, express their First Amendment rights of free speech, can actually engage with their elected officials. That is our core mission. So you work with elected officials and the public to prepare them for uh, their testimonies, I guess, and for speaking up. What other issues are you involved in or other subjects? 
So our primary uh, issues are making sure that our democracy, our constitutional rights are open and transparent and accessible to the public. So we focus on ethics, accountability, and transparency. So we want to make sure that our government is equal on playing field for everybody so that that big money donors, big corporations, that the people who have a lot of money and access don't overrun the common people so that we all have access, we all have equal participation in our government as envisioned by the founders of our constitution or should be envisioned by the founders of our constitution. Your personal professional background is in the legal profession. And so you have a, a, a really deep understanding of our constitutional rights. How do you help the public understand, embrace, activate, you know, what they can do? So we often hold training sessions on how to get involved in the legislature for this 2020 election cycle. We get out the message that we are voting by mail for the first time in Hawaii, that it is imperative that we vote because that is the foundation of American democracy. That is the foundation of our advocacy, our First Amendment free speech. That is how we make our voice heard. That is the very basic thing that people can do engaging with our elected officials is voting. We disseminate information about bills that are moving through the state legislature that impact ethics, that impact campaign finance reform. We want to get money out of politics so that everyone can participate freely in our political system. We talk about transparency in government because we want to make sure that everyone can freely participate. Freedom of speech is relative to, also has been synonymous with the, the term freedom of expression and freedom of action. How does that play in with uh, not only common cause, but you know, here in Hawaii, we're a little bit reticent to speak up sometimes. Um, even when something hurts us or when we're angry, we will maybe complain to our neighbor or complain to our friend, but you're asking us actually to step forward and assemble, gather, petition. Yes, absolutely. Um, I actually think that's slightly changing in Hawaii. About a month or maybe a month and a half ago, there was a huge Black Lives rally at the state capitol, which gathered about, it seemed like 10,000 people. And that was a great turnout. And it showed that the people of Hawaii are motivated and engaged and ready to make their voice heard for change. And that was wonderful. And we've been having um, a, a lot of activism across not just on Oahu, but across the neighbor islands in support of issues that matter to us. And that's a wonderful expression of the First Amendment and of free speech, freedom of assembly. So that is um, absolutely necessary. And I think uh, Hawaii people know uh, that uh, it is uh, good to make our voices heard, especially during these times when things are so uncertain and we've been having these emergency proclamations by Governor Ige suspending Sunshine Law and public records, which is not good for transparency and is not good for access to the government. government. And so people need to speak up more uh, to make our voices heard more and to let government know what we expect from our elected officials, what we expect from our government to serve our needs. That is our First Amendment right, and we need to exercise it. We need to tell government what we want from them because they are there to serve us. It's not the other way around. Thank you so much, Bruno, for that last inspirational statement because it really behooves us to learn more about what's going on in our own state as well as the nation. Thank you so much for the work that you do with Common Cause. No, thank you, Lila, for having me. And everyone vote. <laughs> Please vote. <laughs> Mahalo for tuning in to Island Focus and joining me in meeting Sandy Ma, who is the Executive Director for Common Cause. Aloha. I'm here today on Island Focus with Avi Soifer, who is a professor of constitutional law at the University of Hawaii Richardson Law School.
Mahalo for taking the time to be with us today, Avi. Great to be here. I appreciate the invitation. Would you explain to us a little bit more what that means to you as a professor, what that means to us, and why should it matter? Well, I think free speech matters immensely, uh, and this is a time when free speech is under attack more than one can remember for a long time. Uh, some of the attack is, I think, justified, and we have to be careful when we just lump a lot of things under that label. Uh, so one of the reasons we're having problems now is that our leaders, our politicians, for example, seem to be using and abusing free speech uh, in various ways, and they have some oomph behind it, and they also get attention readily. But a key thing about free speech is that it's for citizens primarily, and it's a duty, in my view, uh, to be educated, to pay attention, and to be willing to express yourself. Uh, there's a lot of talk now about the dangers to democracy, and I think there are severe dangers right now. But people are mostly talking about the vote, and the vote is only the beginning. As a friend of mine puts it, it's the door. But then you get inside, and that's where it, there is an opportunity as well as a responsibility to use what we hope is good civic education to be someone who speaks out when you see the need to speak out. Uh, so it's not a cacophony of voices, and it's not absolute. Uh, that's a mistake that people often make. There are restrictions. No one has ever said in the courts that there's an absolute right to free speech. A good example, people like to talk about shouting fire in a crowded theater. Thanks. And Justice Holmes famously said that. First of all, he said that in the context of a case that restricted freedom of speech. So that's an important thing to know if you learn about uh, the history of free speech. But he didn't say that exactly. He said, falsely shouting fire in a crowded theater and causing a riot. So there's both more and less protection in the actual quote than shouting fire in a crowded theater. That you're not supposed to do. But of course, if there's a real fire in a crowded theater, you might want to say, hey, fire, folks. Uh, but, you know, let's in an orderly fashion go out, you hope uh, you say next. So freedom of speech is not just a complete say whatever you want whenever you want it. Mm -hmm. And there are hurts that are imposed by freedom of speech. There is hate speech and so on. And so there have been restrictions all along in the constitutional development of freedom of speech. Well, and freedom of speech and freedom of expression have been used interchangeably. That's right. Speaking is not just speaking, it's also action. Yes, uh, symbolic speech, uh, for example. I went to the high school that uh, in the Midwest that suspended students for wearing black armbands. Mm -hmm. They actually wore them to mourn all the dead in the Vietnam War, and this was pretty early in the Vietnam War, and they were kicked out because the school said, if you continue to wear those armbands, you'll be beaten up. Well, the Supreme Court ultimately, four years later, the war had changed, the protests had changed, said they had a right, this is the US Supreme Court, they had a right to wear those armbands. Those armbands were a form of expression, even though there are no words. Uh, and so it's the greatest victory for the rights of school children or, or young adults that has ever happened in the Supreme Court. They've cut it back ever since. Uh, but the name of the case is Tinker versus Des Moines Independent School District. My high school, my school district. Who decides when something is not freedom of speech? I know you mentioned the Supreme Court in that particular case, but is it always decided in the, in the legal profession? Not always at all. Uh, and I think an important point is that there's local responsibility. And very few cases wind up in court at all, and many fewer wind up in the higher courts or in the U.S. Supreme Court. They're actually deciding about half as many decisions as were decided in the Warren Court. They're taking fewer cases. So your chances of getting the U.S. Supreme Court are very, very slim. And even if you go to state court or federal court, it's often the case that a case doesn't go to decision, that people settle. So once you know that about who decides legally, it becomes more of a responsibility for people on the ground, as it were. And just to say, oh, I have freedom of assembly, that doesn't win. You have to convince people, your neighbor, perhaps. So you want to say, you can't tell me that I have to quarantine freedom of assembly. Well, that doesn't necessarily win. You can say that, and your neighbor might say, yes, but that's endangering me. Uh, so there is free speech, perhaps, on both sides 
of that argument. And then there's another further depth to that about does the state have the authority to tell you that for the public good, you have to quarantine. Well, thank you so much for spending a little time with us and helping us to understand the, the broader interpretation and Many... uh, also the importance and the significance for us as citizens. Thank you, and thanks for the invitation. Anytime. Good to see you. Mahalo for joining us on Island Focus and meeting Avi Soifer, professor at the UH Richardson Law School. Mahalo. Mahalo for tuning in to Island Focus today. I'm Lila Berg, providing the community with opportunities for freedom of speech. Basically telling your stories is the mission of Olelo Community Media. On behalf of the staff and crew of Island Focus, we wish you aloha and malama pono. Take care of yourselves and let's be thoughtful of each other. See you soon.